we are at Prudo or Pruda, depending on who you are, how you pronounce that, Castle today. I say Prudder, Caroline says. Prudder. But let's have a look around. Prudder Castle. Prudder. Because <laughs> the fog and the tide is all mine, all mine. The fog and the tide is all mine. The fog and the tide is all mine, all mine. The fog and the tide is all mine. Even before we get into the castle, it's already very picturesque. This just looks absolutely beautiful. And we're not even pointing at the castle. And then you can come, I don't want to slip because the ground's a little bit slippery. But there are some ruins of the castle down here. I'm not sure what they are, but I will find out. And then I've got to get Caroline up this steep bank into the castle itself. Okay. Wish me luck. Help. Yeah, go. Whoa. Go, go, gadget. The ground is slippery. It's very slippery. Uh oh, I don't think you're going to do this. Sean, you've got it stuck already. Stuck already. I'm going to get to. <laughs> I can't get you out. I think you're going to have to bring the car up next time. Yeah. You can imagine the horses riding up here, couldn't you? Clippity club, clippity club. Oh, <laughs> oh wow, you've done it. Well done. I don't know whether my uh, wheelchair survived it though. <laughs> Well, I got you off that steep hill. Okay. Let's look from the top. It was very, very slippery. Very slippery. Going through the gatehouse. Whew. I'm out of breath, Sean. Disabled entrance. I'm bringing the car up. <laughs> I don't put him in. Oh, get yourself in there, Pep. You just want to get me in a little <laughs> tight hole, don't you? <laughs> Prudhoe Castle, like most castles, Prudhoe, Prudhoe, um, is very, very old. In fact, there were many, many different versions. On 1120, it was a, a timber castle, quite small. This is a an artist's impression and then gradually over the years it got built up and built up and now it's in the repair and rebuilding stage it's quite interesting you can see how the different windows have changed so they start off like that and then they've went like that and the different archways and there used to be a house here as well we'll go outside and look at those in a second but quite interesting multiple castles on the same spot so you say that it's always been around for like 900 years or more. Yeah. What are these? And you know how Caroline likes our fireplaces, so <laughs> there we go. Yeah, what are these things? This would have been a window head, apparently. Okay. So like it goes in the top corners of the windows to... So Do you think Prudder or as Sean's calling it Prudder, depending on how Geordie you are? Um, like we said earlier, it was owned by the um Umfravilles or Umfields? and the Percy's. They had three chapels in the early, in early years. One was before, one was below the castle gate and dedicated to St Mary. And then one was dedicated to St Thomas Becket. But because of Henry the... Is that eighth, Sean? Yeah, because of Henry the eighth, the castle started to decline in about the 1500s, I think it was, um, because he wasn't bothered about the northern pieces, northern frontiers and inland stuff. He was more interested in defending the coast against the French. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. Just fair enough. Because so there was a dissolution. You got to keep the French out, right? So there was a dissolution of monasteries. <laughs> It was a live. It was a lived-in castle for a lot of years as well. A really, here you go. Here's a, a view of the castle from above. So we're in this building now. I'm heading upstairs. Caroline can't can't get upstairs, but here's some portraits of the Umprevilles who lived here for quite a while. Let's have a. Oh, we can see the model that we always like looking at up here of the castle. There we go, so there's the gatehouse that we walked up. And there's, I don't, I'm not sure what the build, what, that looks a little bit different to, to how it looks now, so. Mm. It's also down next to the river, which, no, you can't really see it out there. Faces over to, to Ovingham. We're now standing in what was the keep, but you can see it, it's fallen down a little bit. If you look up here to this line here, you can see the old roof line of another building. Oh, that sun is bright. You can see walls of this keep and up there. I suspect that these were probably built between the late, um, I think the late to mid, was it mid to late 10th century, is it 10th century or 12th century? So this area was the keep ward, which is outside the big castle keep that we've just been in. You can see the flag on the top. Mm, it'd be interesting if we could get up there. But there'd be some good views. And there's some steps up onto the rampart on the top of the walls. I think that's a turret up there. And you can see, if you come around here, if I zoom in on that window there, that's a crossbow window. And it's where all the crossbow and archers used to pop their weapons to shoot the invaders. I found another crossbow window. Let me just get up here and have a look out. And that would have... All those trees weren't in the way back then. But that would have been a good view. I will say, for wheelchairs, they didn't really think of wheelchairs back in those days. But you can see, look, there's the castle keep. A bit of the castle, and then they've attached the new buildings to the side. And new, these are slight... Uh, this building's the newest, I think, and this one's older, and as castles became less necessary, well, there's another window, another crossbow window, less necessary for fortification and defences, people who owned them started building houses like that one and that one quite close by, the manor houses, and lived in those because they were a little bit more comfortable. Yep. So this area here is the outer bailey. We've just been in the inner bailey. This is the out of the area. It's interesting because that building there with a little cross bow window, I always used to think that those signified churches and things, but actually it's just a cross bow window. There's some walls. And we've got the gatehouse, and I'm going to have a little wander up there in a second. This is that newest manor house that was built, which is where we went in and, and had a look at that information. And what's over here? And this is where they found one of the older parts of the castle. You can see we're at the top of a hill, which is perfect for fortifications. I'm going to have a wander up the gatehouse now. At least it's not a spiral staircase, but this was built in about 1150. Although it is a steep staircase. Should be able to get a good view. Oh, I can't really go any higher, which is a shame. I guess it's because it's too steep, steep in health and safety these days. But here's an overview 
of the outer bailey. I guess I best go back down. Whew. Good thing about a lot of English heritage, which this is a site of, and National Trust, is you can bring your own picnics and sit out and get beautiful scenery. But, you know, it's a very old castle. And this is a very small one actually, so there's not a whole lot of places where it is quite beautiful, especially down there, I think, looking up at the castle itself. Here's an artist's reconstruction of what this outer bailey with the kitchen, kitchen and the brew house would have looked like. Um, it was a good size. Let's have a look around there. This area back here was the hall services and the kitchen. So you can see places where they might have had areas to cook and to clean and, and so on. So this is quite an old kitchen, but it's been modified throughout the ages. So this here was the tank, the oven for cooking, and then the brew house, this building back here. And the brew house was added later on because, you know, Everybody needs a beer. Quite an interesting little castle, really. If, you get a ch if you're ever in the area and you get a chance to come and see it, I'd recommend it. And it won't take you too long to look around. I need to go back down to get the car because it's a steep bank to push the wheelchair. So I'll leave Caroline here. And I'll go and get the car. See you in two days' time. Castle, where we're heading to. I'm just heading down to the river mm -hmm. where we can see a bit of the station mm -hmm. and we can look over the Prudder Bridge or Ovingham Bridge. I'm not sure what it's called. Ovingham? Or, or, it's another one of those Geordie things. Is it Ovingham or Ovingham? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go over that bridge and, and have a look. So it's just down here. We're going to cross the railway track. We don't want to have a look at New Prudder because it's not exactly the nicest uh, of villages, no offence to anybody who lives here. Well, there's the station. There's Prado Station, which actually is still in use. We're going to drive over, let's use. hope we don't get hit by a train. <laughs> and then we're going to head over the bridge into Ovingham. One thing you'll find about a lot of Northumberland, there's a lot of bridges. And the North East in oh, general, hey, actually. I am not going to fit through this. Oof. Am I gonna fit? Will he fit? Will he fit? How much space have I got on your side? Uh, go. And I can move up to your side. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Wow. I made it. You made it. Without scratching. Without really? scratching. I don't know what I filmed of that, but I tried. Oh, so now they're widening it. Yeah, it's a crossing point, but... Uh... 
That was a bit scary. You're sweating. Yeah. Have you got a sweat on? <laughs> got to get back through the same on the other side now. No, you don't. There's other ways to do it. Oh, yeah, but get through No, I mean, I've got to get through it. <laughs> Let's go. How much space on your side? Um, I can't see, babe, to be quite honest with you. You've got plenty, I think. You, you're alright. Right, I've got four left in there. You're alright. <laughs> that was tight. 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 Very tight. We're now in Ovingham. Or Ovingham. Or Ovingham. Ovingham? Or Oving yeah, another one of those northeast places. I'll say I say Ovingham, but what do you actually say? White Swan. We should go there the, for lunch. The White Swan at Ovingham is actually meant to be really nice. We should go there for lunch, babe. For our day out, we popped into the tannery in Hexham. Yeah. This is not a This is Got some Sunday lunch. I'll show you that when it comes. <laughs> Old fashioned pub. Is this an egg? Old fashioned pub. Oh, oh, exactly. Some oh, little dog. <laughs> I've never ended the How are you doing, little doggy? How old is she? Uh, nine months. Just a little puppy. Nine months. Our dinner's come. Caroline's got her halloumi Sunday dinner, which is in Rastham. I have gravy on halloumi and that. And I've went for a chicken with extra pigs and blankets. And I've got a friend to share it with. And you've made a friend to share it with. She's called Bella. Bella. Hello, Bella. She looks like a girl from the never ended story, I think. <laughs> my dinner at the tannery was quite nice I couldn't finish it all my stomach must be getting smaller I think but it was quite nice quite tasty it's a Frank and Bird pub so same as some of our other local ones that we've been to Caroline you had a hair in yours though she still ate most of it but like her normal volume of food but once she found the hair that that put her off a little bit but hey that food was all right we're gonna do a quick pit stop at Hexham Abbey now just to show you something or show you the outside of something um, and then we're gonna head home We've made it all the way to Hexham. This is Hexham Abbey. And in this abbey is where you can find the tomb of Sir Albert Gilfred Umfreville, which is who built Prudder Castle. But if you want to find out more about this abbey and about Hexham, you'll have to tune in to the, to the vlog when we make that. So we're going to come back here and do that. Keep making memories, guys. Catch you later. The fun and the time is all mine